Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Friday Night Flies, take it away, Scotty. Hey guys, welcome to another show of Friday Night Flies, and yes, of course. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 yeah, it's <laughs> Merry Christmas Eve Eve. Uh, 23rd of December. Everybody's getting excited for Christmas. Hey, you know what? I'm going to get in here, yeah, too. Yeah, come on in here. Get in hey, for the, for the warm-up. Merry Christmas hey. to all our loyal fans. This is a special time of year, especially for our children and loyal fans, of course. Scotty? Yeah. Anyhow, take it away. I'll leave it at that one. I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and best of luck in the new year. Yeah. Back at her. Yeah, so that's coming from the Fish Finder family and the uh, Friday Night Flies family. And, of course, we are in Spud Valley Sporting Goods, so we can't forget about them either. 1380 Birch Street, downtown Pemberton. Uh, check us out on Facebook and all your other avenues. G+, Plus, YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, wherever you're finding us. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're all over the shop. But, uh, yeah, so tonight is a special day. So we got a Christmas present that we're giving to one of our loyal fans that has been following us for a long time. I know we see his name coming up on the comments um, pretty regularly on a lot of our flies that we tie. So... A big thank you for the participation and the notes because this guy is a great tire. It's really good uh, watching some of his flies that we get to see on Facebook here and there. And that is a special friend of ours, Carl Dumphy. So thank you for participating. And Carl, this fly down here is for you, bud. So 100% we've pried it out of his secret den. Yeah, so Brad and, did some arm oh, twisting, man, and you, you see he's a big dude, so he twists I arms hard. Got him good. And uh, Carl was nice enough to share this pattern with us. Um, I've tried my best to get it as close to the original pattern that Carl supplied. Um, I didn't have a couple materials, so I kind of <laughs> subbed in a few, but uh, the end result, it looks the same. Um, uh, maybe my eyes might be a little redder because I had to do the old Sharpie with a little white, uh, foam, but, uh, we'll read off the original, of course, on the Friday Night Flies page, you will have the ingredients that we used here, but if you watch the video and you want to do it true to the Carl Dumphy, Dumphy uh, mistletoe, you know what, actually his was called the Pam Anderson Damsel Nymph, it was, and being that it's festive and it's not exactly the same we called it the mistletoe the mistletoe yeah uh booby fly so the original when we go through it the original differences would be the eyes he used the red seven millimeter booby cord uh we live in the mountains and i don't have that all i got is this float foam in size large it's about the same and if you want to see how i made the fly or the eyes because i went ahead and uh, made some up prior, so cut down the length of me trimming this all up. I know some of the other booby shows that I have done, I show you the whole process of how we make the eyes. So go back and type in booby flies and booby flies. look yep. at my last one that I did because we did how to make the eyes. And then I colored it with a magic marker since this one is white. And uh, we'll kind of show you some of that. And so his used the, yeah, the booby cord. And you can use those preformed booby eyes as well. Oh, I know they're that you slick. buy. They're yeah, slick. They're yeah. awesome. Super slick. They're just really expensive. Yeah. yeah. And I still, once I run out of this one cord, I'll be buying them. Yeah, we're fly fishing bombs. And uh, what else was different? There was one other thing. I think it was the ribbing. So he had UTC ice blue pearl medium tinsel, which I did not have. So we subbed out this ice blue or light blue flash pearl flash yeah. and uh, we'll show you how we do it but uh, looking at his original pattern you're getting the same effect on the interior of the fly so when we get down there you'll see it has that same holographic uh, thing that I think he was going for so Carl I hope I did it justice I hope you would like the show have yourself a happy holiday season and everybody, we'll go downstairs and we'll get this sleigh you ride know, going. I want to add one more yeah, thing because something? it was Carl's closing sentence was a, oh. actually quite a funny joke about why he called it the uh, Pam Anderson uh, damsel nymph. Yes. Was because it looks as good in the water 
as your original did in Baywatch. You know, ha -ha. Hey, there we go, Carl. That was a good one, buddy. Good Anyhow, humor on this we're going to go downstairs here. Yeah, and we'll get this fly going. So go. now that you got the nice full screen, you can see why the original was called the Damselfly. This partridge collar or legs that they have on here is dynamite. I don't know why. I had not thought of it myself, but uh, it makes for a really good looking fly. So, guys, if you are making them yourself, that's what the eyes look like. I took some of this cord, chopped it off to size, trimmed out the ends, make them round. And uh, the one difference that I do that I'll give you a little tip is so I colored it with marker. Now, the Sharpie does bleed out after a couple uses. So what I do is I take clear gloss cement, and uh, with my bobbin applicator, I glue all over the eye. So I usually do a couple of these, and I've glued them right on the hook shank. So this thing ain't going to move anywhere. So when I'm doing this fly, when I did it at home, I did the first one, and then I tied another five because I liked it so much. So I just did all these preformed hooks with the uh, gloss coat head cement. It keeps everything nice and secure, and it helps to lock that color into the foam that you've colored. So now that we got that on there, let's get building this thing. So we got our thread. I believe I'm using a six or eight aught, eight aught. A uni thread in the camel. I'm just going to get this base going again. Then we're going to bring it to about the hook point, which is, or not the hook point, just past the hook point. So we're bringing it to where the hook just starts to bend at the back. Now, most times you're going to see the tail go on first and then the rib go on after. Now, the only problem when you're using really flowy material such as this diamond or diamond this pearl flash is if you get that tail on and then try to wrap the marabou up the shank which is how we're going to form the body and you put tying this on afterwards it gets really hard to get that uh, marabou wrapping around and not getting this interfering with so I just stick it on at first, and I should have mentioned as well, I stick it on the side. So I'm tying it on the side of my hook. So again, it'll stay out of the way of my tail once I get it on. So we got that on there. We're going to grab some marabou here. Let's find some good fabric to work with. Something nice and bushy. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. Alright, so I'm going to take my marabou. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Nice little tail. So you can uh, vary the tail. Since this one is a kind of more of a damsel pattern, I don't make, I'm probably making the tail twice as, or half as small as what I normally do on a booby because I want it to be a little bit more elegant and long and flowing like a damsel nymph is but traditionally on my boobies I would probably take almost all of this fabric and put it on there but I was looking at the original it's a little Carl's is a little slimmer alright so I got that on there I'm gonna do a tail that's about the length of the shaft so I'm just gonna Get it all together, get it on the top of my hook, one, two, three, secure those wraps in. All right, I'm going to take our thread and come up behind the eyes. Now to form the body, I'm just going to take the rest of this marabou and give it a little twist and I'm going to come up the hook shaft towards the eyes and get them right in behind those eyes and when I'm doing this last couple wraps here to secure this I am making sure that I get that thread right up behind those eyes give it a good little snug down and get rid of the tag now I don't want that body coming undone 
So I'm going to really secure those little bits here. Don't worry about these flyaways. It's just going to add character. Now, I got two pieces of that pearl flash. Now, if you pull pearl, pearl flash too tight, you take all the pearl flash out of it and it just comes flat. So I'm going to take these two strands, give them a little twist, and I'm going to very gently and nicely wrap them up the body. Try not to pull too hard so you still get all that nice divots right up to the eyes. And again, one, two, three. And then we can get rid of this. Oh. And if you have any flyaways, we can just kind of trim them down. There we go. We got our body back. Beautiful. Next, the legs on this bad boy. We're going to go to the partridge feather here. And Carl, this was a very, very nice addition to this fly. Nothing to change there, so I'm looking for top of my pack of feathers is getting pretty slim. Let's get some good ones going on here. Not long enough. We want a little bit of a long fiber, but you don't want too long. Like that's too long, coming way past the tail. I'll be a little choosy. What do we got here? What do we got here? Let's get those fiber up. That should be. That's a nice looking feather. Oh yeah, it is. That's that's the one. Let's not put that one you back. You know that this. thing's gonna catch fish, and it's gonna catch lots of fish. Oh man. This, you know this it, one is good. I'm taking this one straight to Lost Lake in the spring. Oh yeah. All right, so we got our partridge feather. I'm gonna get rid of the down part in the back. So I'll just peel her back. And let's get this feather secured right in behind those eyes. So I guess you can vary how heavy you want this collar, but Carl's original one was was pretty sparse, so I didn't really do too many wraps. I didn't bring my hackle pliers, so we'll try to do this old school. So I believe I only did about one or two wraps. And this one's just taking one. This is a good one. So we got that one wrap in there. Just make sure you're grabbing those fibers in behind. You know what? This pattern's got me thinking about dragonfly nets. That that looks really similar to the BK dragon. If you put a black eye on that thing and tied it on a bigger shank, like a size one. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, it just shows you it has the right proportions and properties, right? Oh yeah. So I got that in there nice and good. I'm pretty happy with it. It's all pretty evenly all around it. Now what I did with with mine, which I kind of liked, was I just kind of gathered the feathers and just pulled them to either side a little bit. And you'll find it kind of changes, really changes the look. Just kind of pull them down. Just gotta make sure you're talking nice and loud. We don't want people missing out on all your helpful advice, Scotty. And next. So to finish this guy off. Oh, and Carl's also used a fire orange thread. So it ended up with a nice little hot spot. Mm -hmm. When I was packing up my gear today, I overlooked that one. So got a little spiky squirrel. Um, any sort of dubbing will work. If you want to use a little of uh, Superfly diamond dub, get a little bit more flash in the head. Um, you know, that's where you can kind of really trick it out a little. Well, we got something, the new, new age hot spot. Oh, do you got, uh, what do you got? Oh, I got something that's going to replace that thread. Since it is Friday Night Flies. Oh, your little going... glue that you bought there? That head cement. That yeah. head cement. This is UV2 as well. So, so I got two a little bit of that spiky squirrel on there. And I'm going to get, you really want to watch those those partridge legs, you don't want to lose all that nice work you did. And then we just kind of figure eight around the eyes. Need a little bit more on there. This partridge out of the way. 
throwing from my hands, folks, but I want to get this. These eyes are big. The other name he had on it was the Enhanced Booby Eyes, because he used big booby eyes on his. So there we go. We just need to get... We want to get a little bit of fluff in between there, in the cleavage. That's right. Make them pop. Yeah. Prop them up. And then... Just get a little quick finish going. So now I can tell you your little head cement is might be a little tricky on this particular fly. Because I got all the dubbing in the head of it. So if you use orange thread, you'll get a nice little hit of of orange in there. Not very often we get to play with boobies at work. No. And then use, you can use your Velcro, or just take your bobbin. And I like to just kind of pick up, pick out some of this dubbing that we got in there. Just bug it out a little bit. Get in that space, let it get some water. And that basically is it. And if you want, you can rough up your partridge. Just take a little toothbrush, hit it all. Get those legs just kind of working so they're not so static. Give them a little kink to them. That, I think, is it. This is dead sick. Finish, finish it off. We'll try Brad's uh, orange hard head here. Woo! Yeah, you got it. I didn't know there was a brush attached to it. Oh, it's fresh, baby. But I, I think the, the it top... It lasts a long time, too. So, let's just do a little touch of this orange head cement. Let's see if we can't get it in the bottom. And that's UV, big time. Get it around there. Don't worry about it being in the eye. Once it dries, then I just go and uh, pull it out. Take your little tip there. Pop out that little bubble you got in your head or in the eye. And there you go. I don't know if they got the right angle on the camera there. Well, here, if you hold this, I'll tell you if you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can see it glowing there? Oh, yeah. That's time. crazy. Yeah, you can see what that little UV hotspot did. And um looks like that flash boo's got a little bit of UV in it too. Oh definitely. Yeah. She's that's a sexy fly. Anyhow, Carl, let's uh we'll take it maybe just give it a slow roll and we'll give them a quick look at what it looks like on top and under. Man, yeah. that thing is mighty fishy. We are really looking forward to fishing this this uh spring and fall and summer. Most definitely. Oh I'm excited. Anyhow, Let's take her up top here, Scotty. Yeah. Hello again. So, thank you, Carl, for sharing your recipe with us. Uh, we much appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, happy holidays to all you guys out there. And keep tying. I know it's winter time, And hopefully you're in an area where you can do some ice fishing. Because we are. And we're loving it. It's a good little break. Uh, but this is the season to be tying. So we're going to be back with a couple more shows. I believe Zach sent us a show yeah, from Zach, down in Tawasson. Yeah. Zach's got a flying so, black ant. And uh, he's got a mini intruder style fly as well. Which is smoking. And if we don't run over too late, maybe Brad can get on there and do another Christmas fly. But I know oh, he's on a time crunch. I'm on a timeline. So he's I'm on a time it's crunch. probably going to be next week. He's got Christmas dinner with oh. mom. I've got a, Mom I've got and a the family candy cane fly that's gonna be a smoker. It's like a almost looks like a a pumpkin head, but with red and white. Yeah. With a red head. So you guys have Stop heard it. about it, so maybe you guys sit and come up with your own version and we can post a bunch of pictures. Maybe by because I think it'll be it's five o'clock, so I think Brad will probably get to it next week. <laughs> and uh, so if you guys post a bunch of your variations and we can see how they measure up. That's right, and I'll pick the best one, I'll tie it. <laughs> Ah, there you go. Okay, Merry Anyways, Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas, guys. Thanks for watching.